Well, I'm very pleased to say we've got a chance now to discuss what America's game plan might be next with a political veteran. Joining me is Vili Vimmer. He's former vice president of the OSC Assembly. Sir, uh, delighted to have you on the program. Um, as it stands at the moment, America seems to think the more Russia is punished here, the more sorted the situation will be. Do you agree with that? I think the situation is uh, totally complicated. And uh, everything we know perhaps goes back to the Cuban crisis uh, some decades ago. Um, we know well, that, that the Cold War continues. Countries, no, it's, I think it's even more complicated. Uh, it's not only Cold War. It uh, can be outstanding and dangerous. And when we go back to the Cuban crisis, we know that Big powers draw usually a red line. And for the Americans, it had been 90 kilometers away from Miami. There shouldn't be Soviet nuclear arsenal. And here in the Ukraine, it's again similar. The Russian Federation draws a red line, and they are not interested in having a country direct in their neighborhood who might change itself into a living danger, like a landmine, like a nuclear arsenal, which is located next to my own border. And therefore, I think we face a critical situation in the next weeks, perhaps even the next days. And we only can hope that somebody might intervene in a sympathetic way, not to create war in Europe. What is the attitude in your country, sir, in Germany? I mean, you're closer to the border than America certainly is. What do most Germans think about this these days? I think um, most uh, Germans, uh, they have really problems when they look on the um, actual situation. And there is a lot of fear ongoing. And um, this fear might be in a critical situation when it comes to the visit of our chancellor to Washington in the next week or so. And um, many people think that uh, Angela Merkel might arrive in Washington and we still have peace. And when she will come back to Berlin, there might be a different situation, perhaps even war. And therefore, there is an ongoing fear in Germany because of the situation and uh, they don't blame Russia for this situation. They look on Washington. And it's Washington that's pushing Europe here, then, yeah, as you see it? It's not only uh, Washington pushing the Europeans. It's Washington who, who, uh, which organized the events which are going on in the Ukraine. And we can go back to remarks being made by Mrs. Newland that they invested more than six billion US dollars to create such a critical mess which uh, led at the end to the Maidan development and therefore they want a return of investment. You're a much respected diplomat, politician over the years. You've seen a lot. How do you think this is going to play out over the next month or so? Um, I uh, hope that we uh, have some months for negotiations or for an agreement and when we go back to the Cuban crisis it was a direct link switch, uh, between um, President Kennedy and Secretary General Khrushchev, who made it possible to find a solution. And therefore, I think it's not a question of negotiations. There has to be a direct contact between Obama and Putin. Otherwise, we face more than only a critical situation. How much role does the uh, local interim Ukrainian government have here, then? Is it kind of out of their hands? It's in Washington's hands, yeah? Because we've got them calling the people in the East here a mob. I think the um, junta, in, as far as I see it in, in Kiev, is playing a dangerous card. They are acting against their own population as if there would be enemies. You can't... Um, keep tanks and artillery and planes going against your own people as long as they have occupied houses or have barricades. Usually in at least European circumstances, that's a question for police and not for the military. military. And therefore, I think the junta in Kiev is like a trigger for a mine. And this mine will explode sooner or later.
Philippe uh, not a good uh, prognosis you're giving there, but we do appreciate your thoughts. Philippe former Vice President of the OSC Assembly, thank you.